Hey, Stoney. Hey, Rocky. <laughs> hey, 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 who were you talking to earlier today? Oh, that was my friend, Barry the Banana. I told him he should go to the doctor. Oh, really? Why? Because he wasn't peeling too good. Ha, ha, very funny. <laughs> so then I said, why are the apple and orange all alone? And he said... Because the banana split. <laughs> yeah, you done? <laughs> yeah, I'm out of banana jokes. Okay. Hey, you want to play a game? Ooh, of course. <laughs> All right. It's called Follow the Leader. Ooh, I love that game. So you know how to play? <laughs> sure. First you need a gallon of mayonnaise. Then you grab a box of Apple Jacks. Mix that all in a big old bowl. <laughs> Stony. <laughs> After it's mixed, you get a great big cannon. <laughs> Stony. That's not how you play Follow the Leader. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's not how you play any game. Fine. So how do you play? It's easy. First, I do an action, and then you copy it. So, uh, what kind of actions can we do? Because I don't move nowhere, and neither do you. Oh, right. We also don't have any body parts to move around. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, that's the challenge. Watch, watch, it'll be fun. Okay, here we go. Okay, now you do it. Do what? What I did. Oh, I didn't know we started. Sorry, do it again. <sighs> okay, pay attention. You ready? Yeah. Now you. <laughs> okay, that's not what I did. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> that's not what I did. <laughs> yeah, but mine was better. <laughs> that's not the game. Okay, I'll go again. Do what I do. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. The year was 1746, a year of elegance and aristocrats. Tea time was fast approaching, and Sir Monaghan was... What is that? I translated your blah, blah, blah. Sir Monaghan was just about to have some tea. <sighs> Look, Stoney, why don't you just be the leader this round? Okay. <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> I can't do that. Guess I win again. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not about winning. It's just about doing what the other person does. Okay, I'll go again. Okay. Banana. Pie. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just repeat it. Oh. Banana. Bread. Stony. Okay, okay. <laughs> Banana. Fofana, feet by Fofana. <laughs> All right, forget it. <sighs> All you had to do was follow after me. Oh, you mean like in today's lesson? <laughs> What's today's lesson? Oh, it's all about Peter, how he declared Jesus was his Lord. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you have to obey what I tell you. Oh, wow. Well, that's a super important lesson. I can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in the meantime, want to hear another fruit joke? <laughs> no, because they're unparable. <laughs> I don't get it. Never mind. Yo, what's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about how you must obey Jesus no matter what the cost. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them, if I wanna follow Jesus, I must obey. If Jesus is gonna be the Lord of our lives, we have to follow his commands. What if he wants me to do something that I think is totally lame-o? I mean, you still gotta obey him. Man, what if I just don't feel like it? I mean, you still gotta. I mean, what if I've been boogie boogieing all night long and I'm just too sleepy? Yep, you still gotta obey him. If Jesus is gonna be the Lord of your life, you gotta sacrifice what you want and do what he wants. Oh, that's far out. I just gotta obey him and do what is totally righteous. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. If I wanna follow Jesus, I must obey. And that right there is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino Mike! Okay, okay, let's hear today's Bible story. Before we start, I have a question. I'm gonna let you guess 
Who do you think we're talking about today? Peter. Yes, Peter. Peter is in the story. Are you ready to hear it? Okay, let's get started. Today's Bible story is found in the book of Mark, chapter 8. One day, Jesus and the disciples were just sitting together, talking, hanging out, and Jesus started asking some interesting questions. He asked them, who do the people say I am? Hmm. See, Jesus did a lot of amazing things. He went around preaching, doing miracles, saving lives, raising people from the dead. So a lot of people had some different ideas of who Jesus was. So Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? The disciples started sharing with Jesus some of the things they heard people say. One of the disciples told Jesus, well, I heard some people say that you are the prophet Elijah. Another disciple said, okay, well, I heard some people saying that they think you're John the Baptist. That's interesting, right? Why would they think that that's who Jesus is? But then Jesus was listening and he had a much more important question to ask. You ready to hear this question? He asked the disciples, well, who do you say that I am? <gasps> the disciples got kind of nervous. That's a pretty big question, right? It's just like when you're at school and the teacher calls on you to give an answer when you did not raise your hand. <gasps> don't you get so nervous? You're like, oh, I want to get it right. Oh, I hope I don't get it wrong. That's exactly how the disciples were feeling in this moment. Jesus had just asked them who they think he is. They wanted to make sure they get this answer perfectly correct and don't say anything wrong because that would be embarrassing, right? So they were all nervous. They looked at each other. They're like, who's going to say something? I don't want to be wrong. And then one disciple spoke up. Who do you think it was? Peter. It was. It was Peter. That's right. Good job. Peter spoke up boldly and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus spoke to Peter, and he said, eh, wrong. No, he didn't say that. Of course not. I'm glad you're listening. No, no, he said to Peter, he said, blessed are you, Peter, for God is the one who has revealed this to you. Then Jesus began to teach the disciples what it meant for them to call him the Lord of their lives. Jesus said, if anyone is going to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Everyone say, huh? What in the world is Jesus talking about? What a strange thing to say, right? Take up your cross? What does that even mean? Who thinks that's really confusing? Yeah, you might all be asking the question, Jesus, what are you talking about? And that's a good question to ask, one that we are going to learn the answer to today in our lesson. So you've got to be listening carefully because this lesson is going to help us understand what it means to call Jesus our Lord and how to follow him. I can't wait for you to hear more. Out of sight! Yes, everyone stand up. What okay, know? let's get this dance move. Here we go. If I want to follow Jesus, I must obey. Good job, everyone. Now it's time for today's Power Verse with Presto Changeo. <laughs> Boys and girls, it is I, Presto Changeo, the greatest illusionist that ever lived. I am here to ensnare your mind, tickle your senses, and make you say, Wow, how do you do that? All right, boys and girls, are you ready for today's Powderverse? Today's Powderverse says, If any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Mark 8.34 What an astounding Powerverse! Ha <laughs> ha! But now it is time to make the words of the Powerverse disappear with the help of my handy dandy sidekick, Hokey! Come on, man! It's not that hard! My name is Hocus Pocus! Uh-huh, yeah, right. But anyway, it's time to make some words of this Powerverse disappear! Ah, yes! Now, which words should I make disappear? How about 
this one. Oh, and now this one. What about this one? Ah, <laughs> yes. Now, on the count of three, you're going to say the Powderverse with Hokey. Hocus Pocus. You hit the fingers of doing this, but I need to be doing this, okay? All right, here we go. Boys and girls, here's the Powderverse on the count of three. Ready? One, a two, a three. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Mark 834. Okay, okay, that was pretty good. But let's see, how do you do with this? I'm going to make even more words vanish before your eyes. Like this one. And this one. Ha ha! Okay, now let's see just how much you'll remember. Say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Mark 834. Good job. And now for my greatest trick ever. Sure it is. It really, really is. Oh, my name's Hokey, and I'm a hand, and I sound like this. Well, that's really great. My grandmama said so. Well, anyway, boys and girls, it's time for my greatest trick of all time. I will make myself disappear. This is Presto Change of the Great. Say, now you see me. Now you don't. Beep, bop, lork, peek, bop, boop. Now, today we're learning about who Jesus is. Now, you may think you know who Jesus is, but let's look all the way back at our Bible story and figure out what it means. See what we're talking about. See, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he asked them, who do people say that I am? Jesus was asking the disciples, hey, what's the word on the street? What's everybody saying about me? What, what are they saying? Who are they saying that he was? Now, the disciples came up with all kinds of different answers. Do, you, do y'all remember some of those answers? What did the disciples say? What? John the Baptist, absolutely. Who else? Elijah, absolutely. They came up with all these answers. The disciples were telling Jesus that the people had many different opinions of who Jesus really was. Then Jesus took a step back, and he asked a big question. He asked, who do you say I am? Then the guy we're learning about, who are we learning about? Peter, Peter, he spoke up, and he answered. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, Jesus was proud of Peter's answer. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, because my Father in heaven, God, is the one who helped you see this. And then Jesus began to teach something that must have been hard for the disciples to kind of understand. He said, if any of you wants to be my follower, You must deny yourself, take up your, take up your cross and follow me. Now, we look at this, what is this? It's a cross. We look at this maybe a little different. What, what, when you see the cross, what do you think of? Raise your hand. What do you think of? What do you think of? Jesus dying. What do you think of? Jesus dying. What else? Jesus, okay, what else? Okay, something other than just Jesus. What else do you think of when you see the cross? Huh? Say that. (laughs) What do you think of? Yeah, absolutely. What else? Perfect. We think of all kinds of great things. We think about Jesus. 
We think about his grace. We think about the fact that he died on the cross so we could forgive, have forgiveness of our sins. How many of you think the cross is a pretty great thing? I do too. But here's the deal. When the disciples heard this, when Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, it meant something really different. Had, had Jesus died on the cross yet at that point? No. You see, the cross to the disciples meant something so much more than a symbol of sin or forgiveness. In fact, it was scary. Because to the disciples, they saw this as a Roman torture device. Something that was horrible. Something that meant pain and suffering and death. See, when Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, it didn't mean oh, we're going to have grace and forgiveness and blessings and all this great stuff. To them, it meant, wow, this is going to be really, really hard. It was kind of scary. It was something difficult and different. It represented sadness, death, pain, all this stuff. So when Jesus said that he wanted his followers to take up the cross, they knew that Jesus meant this wasn't going to be easy for them to do. And today, I want to ask you a very important question. Number one, is Jesus your Lord? Each one of us must make that choice at some point in our lives. We have to answer that same question the disciples answered. Who do you say that I am? Do we think Jesus is a good man, a good teacher, Or is he your Lord? Now, your mom can't make that decision for you. I can't make that decision for you. Your friend can't make that decision for you. Who has to make that decision for you? You do. Yourself. You have to ask yourself, is Jesus my Lord? If he isn't, all you have to do is pray. And ask him to forgive you of your sins and be the Lord and Savior of your life. Then you must choose to follow him the rest of your life. That's why we say we want you to be a lifelong follower of Jesus. He has an amazing plan for your life, but it doesn't end there. If you answer yes to that question or or you pray the prayer to make Jesus your Lord, if Jesus is Lord... You must obey his commands. If Jesus is Lord, you must obey his commands. When someone is your Lord, that means they have authority over you. You listen to them, you obey them, you do what they command. Jesus has given us many commands in his word. These commands are given to help us live a strong life for God. If Jesus is your Lord, you will obey his commands. And if Jesus is your Lord, you must be willing to sacrifice. You have to give up your way and choose his way. After all, he's the one who created you. He's the one who knows what your life should look like. So guess what? You can trust him to lead your life into his plan. But it's not always easy to obey, is it? I mean, it's not always easy to give up what you choose and instead do what he wants, is it? No, it really isn't. It's tough. That's why we call it sacrifice. We give up our way of doing it for his way. It definitely costs us something. It's definitely difficult our life. But what do we get in return? What do we get in return for following his commands, obeying him, and living life his way? What's our reward? We get eternal life, the real life. So in the end, yes, it's tough to make Jesus your Lord, to obey his commands and be willing to sacrifice. But in the end, it is so worth it. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes.
Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself that question. And remember, I can't answer it for you. Your mom can't. Your dad can't. Your friends can't. Only you can. So one more time. Instead of in a in a teaching manner where I'm I'm telling you about stuff, I want you to answer this question. Is Jesus your Lord? If the answer is yes, then awesome. Remember, we have to obey his commands and be willing to sacrifice. It's gonna be tough to follow Jesus. But if the answer is no, and you say, do you know what? I I heard you tonight, Pastor Tyler. You talked about that this is going to be really tough, that this is a big decision to make. But I want that reward. I want that greatness of being able to spend eternal life one day in heaven with Jesus. So right now, the answer to that question is no. But I want the answer to be yes. And I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. If that's you and the answer is no, but you want to serve him, I want you to raise your hand. Yeah. Lord, you see the boys and girls that have raised their hand. God, we thank you for what you've put into their hearts today and what you've spoken to them to make this very important decision. God, I I, I pray first off that you would come into their life and forgive them of their sins and that their life would forever be different. But their goal in life would be to be a lifelong follower of you. So Lord, help us to obey your commands and be willing to sacrifice even when it's hard. We understand this isn't going to be easy. We understand there are going to be difficult times or moments where it just feels like we are not going to make it through it. But Lord, your plan is greater than our plan. So Lord, help us to live our lives serving with you as Lord. And God, in the end, Let us reach the ultimate reward of getting to spend eternity in heaven with you. God, we thank you that we even have the opportunity to answer that question, are you Lord of our life? Because of what you did on the cross. We thank you that you forever changed the meaning of the cross to something that is grace-filled and exciting and freeing. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And listen, if you made the decision today to make Jesus the Lord of your life, talk to someone. Whether it's me or your mom or dad, don't keep this quiet. This is something exciting. Yes, it's going to be hard and difficult, but this is the most important decision you will ever make in your life celebrate with your parents or someone because this is an exciting time in your life.